Good morning. Well, now what a day. Isn't it fantastic? Here we are. Uh, look at the sun. Isn't it beautiful? Now I put on this jacket. I almost really didn't need it. Uh, but anyway, I did, I did when I came out first, let me tell you. So here we are on Thursday morning and we're going into Thanksgiving weekend. Isn't that marvelous? Now, uh, last weekend or last week, rather, I was telling you, okay, I'll take my time now. I'm on a bit of a sort of woods path here, um, behind home hardware. Uh, it's because it's very busy in the Goulds. Uh, right now, they're doing some construction down by uh, Hector's farm and, and uh, Gracie's shack there, the corner or Gracie's uh, stand for all the fruit and vegetables. You know where I told you to go last week? Yeah, down right there, they're doing some uh, construction. Don't let that put you off. Get your pumpkins there. Uh, but anyway, um, so I thought, you know what, I'll take the back road this morning so that the traffic doesn't knock me down. And, uh, and I nearly tripped there a minute ago, but anyway, thank God I didn't. So here we are. Uh, last week I was telling you about, remember I was telling you about Mary at the home and I was telling you about, um, how she was a little bit jealous of me and uh, Sister Patricia Marie. Well, you know how when you're on a phone call and you think, oh, God, I forgot to tell her that. And then you can call right back. Well, that's not the case here. I can't just get back on and say, oh, by the way, I forgot this. And then carry on as if you're all going to be there. You're not. You're busy people living your lives as you should be. However, I thought, well, I'll put that in my little sock now and I'll... I'll uh, uh, remember to tell them next week. So Mary, so one day, <laughs> I forgot this one little thing. One day I went down to see Patricia Marie, you know, because every day, as I told you, we'd have a Diet Pepsi, we'd solve the world, woes of the world, and we'd go home. One day I went down, and I didn't realize she was going out, and I said, uh, yeah, and Mary was down lurking about, I said, uh, Mary, is Sister, Sister Patricia around? She said, she can't go out, you know. <laughs> looking at me, turned with me. I said, yes, I suppose she can. So every now and again, when someone goes out, you know, I'll look at them and say, she can go out, you know. Well, all of you are going to start imitating. It may be mindful. It's mimicking. It's not a mockery at all. It's mimicking. And, you know, as we look now on Thanksgiving, I want to tell you that next week I am not going to be here on Thursday. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have a live video on Tuesday morning instead. It'll be nice. It'll be after everyone's full of turkey, and uh, and 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 I, I might have something special to tell you. So be sure to watch next Tuesday morning at ten thirty rather than. Thursday morning. Thursday, I won't be here. If you're propped up looking at Facebook, hoping that there wasn't a worldwide outage on Thursday, you won't see me. You'll see me on Tuesday morning. I hope you're all getting that. Anyway, so now uh, we're talking about Thanksgiving and I'm going to tell you, I think we should just do this, uh, you know, because I tell people about you all the time. Now I know some people are, some people just don't look at videos on Facebook and I understand that. Uh, you know, why they wouldn't, I don't understand that, but anyway, uh, but they don't. And so they don't know about you and they don't know that we have a little special relationship, but you know, so when I thought about today, I thought, okay, what will we talk about uh, with regard to Thanksgiving? So I think now is a good opportunity for you to put what you're thankful for in the comments, you know, and uh, let's just say it for what it is. I know we're thankful for our families and that's not to dismiss that thanks. We are, we know this. Pick out something different, like pick out, I'm thankful for haagen chocolate chunk ice cream, for an example. Uh, it might be a little tiny bit. Uh, that's okay. Uh, no, I think it's okay. If we're thankful for ice cream, put it down. 
you know, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I look at uh, Thanksgiving and I was assessing my life and I'm very blessed, as you know. <sighs> Thank God. And I was assessing, um, you know, as I was coming up there, I thought, you know what? I've never in my lifetime, I've never broken a bone. Now, I put that down to uh, me drinking milk. Have you broken a bone as well? Put that in your thanks as well. Uh, have you broken a bone? Because I have never. In fact, uh, the only person in the family who broke a bone was my brother Crosby. And I think that's mainly because he thought it was Sidney Crosby and realized that he's not. <laughs> and so he broke it on uh, the ice, skating trying to score a goal, I suppose, trying to be cool. Anyway, but I will tell you that I, growing up, as you know, I grew up on a farm and all of us drank a barrel of milk every day and it was straight from the cow. So it was good milk. It wasn't this sort of, you know, milk that's been watered down, not that it has been. Milk hasn't been watered down. It's just been, you know, pasteurized and such. But, you know, and dairy farmers of Newfoundland and Labrador will tell you, 2% more and you should get it. You should be drinking milk because I will tell you that I have never broken a bone in my life. And it's because I drank a liter of milk every morning for breakfast. Now this kind of got away from me in later years because I've been asked something like Stern Dragger. However, milk is still very good for you now. And you might know actually, uh, Crosby, my brother, he, uh, is the one you'll see him on the Metro bus you know, with a great big smile and handsome as anything. He has a head on him like a 20 shilling pot. Mom always said it, but handsome and weak ankles. But other than that, he's perfect. So, uh, you know, drink your milk is my point. Uh, drink your milk because it's very good for you and it'll keep your bones strong. So as I look back though, over my life, I think about my, my uh, thing that I'm most thankful for uh, today is my memories. Years ago, we had this man who lived around a pond. And his name was Mr. Hannaford. And he spoke, uh, he had a rough voice. I don't know if he smoked, I don't remember it. But anyway, his voice was ravaged. And anyway, he used to have pigs <laughs> over, over around the pond where my brother Scott lives now. He used to have pigs. And they were the biggest pigs you've ever seen. And when you're a child, I suppose, they look all the bigger. They look like they should have belonged on Avatar or something like this, some sort of scary movie. Uh, and anyway, great big uh, Game of Thrones. That's what I was trying to look for. Uh, great big pigs. And so they would kill them there in, in like next to the barn. They'd, they'd kill the pigs, you know, with an X, I suppose. I don't know, because dad one day, when they were killing a pig, they cut open his hand right along, see where that line is? Uh, right along the sort of palm of it. Cut, cut the hand right open. Dad then ran into the woods. Mr. Hannaford said, uh, Fanny was his wife. Mr. Hannaford said, Jeannie, Jeannie, Fanny, look, he's gone mad with the pain. <laughs> anyway, Dad had gone into the woods to get the turpentine to bind up the cut. And which I thought was very clever, actually, when you size it up. But when you grow up, you know, tough, you know what to do. So anyway, he got the turpentine, bound it up. And, you know, Dad would tell us stories about Mr. Hanford. It was a delightful man. He had a wonderful family. And anyway, he would tell us stories years uh, before I was born. They had killed a cow. And the cow was in the back of a truck. And anyway, it was on a, it was a sheet of plywood, you know. And so um, the, those t days, the, the trucks had a clutch, you know, that jolt the head, you know, if you banged, uh, it took it off too quickly. And so anyway, dad and uh, one man was in one truck. I shan't say his name because I, I don't, uh, I, I don't want anyone to, to, to talk, you know, to be put off. So dad and this man was in one, were in one truck and my uncle Billy and Mr. Hennifer were in the truck behind. And so the other man was a bit nervous, you know, and so he wasn't used to driving. And so when he took the clutch off, cow, cow in the back on a piece of plywood, when he took the clutch off, 
The truck jolted ahead. The cow slid out onto the crushed stone road on the long run. Do you know where this is? Down Petty Harbor Road, just there before you get to, just before the, before the dam, before the bridge, or the dam and the flume. Uh, so the truck jolted ahead. The cow came out on the road, blood everywhere. Mr. Hannaford, uh, the other man got out dancing around the truck like this, you know, oh my God. He said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Dad said, you know, years ago, they could tear away generations in one sentence. Because he said, Mr. Hannaford got out then. He said, you're no good. Your father was no good and your grandfather was no good. He said, get it off. And so anyway, Dad then lifted, Dad and my Uncle Billy and this other man, lifted up the cow, body load. Now that's a thousand pounds, if you don't mind me saying. From the ground, from the crushed stone, into the truck in one fell swoop. And the, and the funeral coming up behind him, up on the long run. And I thought, God bless the good old days. You know, you'd never see that now. You'd never see a dead cow out on, out on the road, you know, after just killing it. You know, why, why has life changed in such a way? <laughs> but anyway, you know what? As we think about being thankful, that's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful I have so many beautiful, wonderful memories. You know, just memories that are fun. Okay, now we'll crack up. Remember on Tuesday, I'm going to have my live video, not Thursday at all. I have shaped my life around ye crowd. Now I'll just say it. I'm worse than mom. She'd say, darling, it's ye. That you're the reason I'm doing this, and you are. You, I have shaped my life so that I can organize it, so that I can be with you once a week. So thank you for that. And uh, I'll tell you one more little story before I go. You know, years ago, this man and woman they lived. Uh, they were they were wealthy. You know, and they lived down the East End, down King William. So you know they were well off, right? And so anyway. They, let me just give you a little, hang on. Oh, look how beautiful. There you are. If this isn't a commercial for Dairyman's, uh, Dairyman's of Newfoundland and Labrador, or Dairy Farmers of Newfoundland and Labrador, sure what is? Isn't that wonderful? Drink your milk. Anyway, they uh, lived down in King William, and they had a, they had a bit of a relationship, you know, where they, they've been together for a long time and they were just kind of going along. So they went down to Ballyhaley for supper, you know, the country club, very well off, because uh, that was very posh back then. And so probably still is, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, they went to Ballyhaley and were sat down having supper. And this pretty girl comes along and leans down to John and kisses him on the mouth. And uh, Marie is looking up at her and looking at John and said, you know, when she left, said, what, wh who is that? He said, oh, he said, uh, well, he said, that's my mistress. He said, you know about that. She said, no, no, I didn't know about that. She said, no, this is unacceptable. She said, you know what? I have put up with you for far too long. She said, this is the end of it. You know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to get uh, uh, the best lawyer in town, who at the time was Danny Williams. And she said, and I'm going to, we are separating. I'm going to take everything, half of everything we have together. He said, darling, that's up to you. He said, that's up to you. But he said, we'll just have to realize and recognize that, you know, things will be smaller. He said, you know, we'll have to get rid of our house in King William and go for a couple of little bungalows on Carrick Drive. He said, you know, and we'll have to get rid of our Land Rover, maybe go with a Toyota or something like this, you know, a Corolla. He said, you know, things will be, there'll be no more summers in, in, in Tuscany, he said, and winters in Florida. He said, you know, things will just be smaller. That's all there is to it. And at that point, Jason, their friend, came along and with a girl on his arm. And she said, now, who's Jason with? He said, well, now, see, there you go. That's Jason's mistress. Yeah, she said, ours is much prettier. <laughs> I know, she reconciled it so quickly. <laughs> anyway, listen, God love you. I hope you have a wonderful week. And, um, and happy Thanksgiving to you all. I'm thankful for you. And uh, I will see you on Tuesday morning, not Thursday morning.
So don't forget now, come and see me. I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful week. Love to you.